That's right, guys. Al Soto here with Click on This Show here with Steve Shankman, president of Excel Homes. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. It's a beautiful day out. A little it's hot, but it's beautiful. A beautiful day out. Certainly very sweltering hot. Here for a great cause, Excel Homes, teaming up with Girls Hope and Boys Hope for the show, Extreme Makeover Home Edition, here in North Baltimore, Maryland. Wow. Tell us uh, a little bit about this home that we're building right here. Well, as you can see, it is a large home. And it really is a, a combination of a modular home build and traditional building. And we've been very, working very closely with the Maryland, Business, uh, uh, Maryland Builders Foundation to really coordinate our efforts and get the best of both modular and traditional building. Could you explain modular homes for those that might not know? Well, modular home you build in a controlled environment in a factory. And we have up to 24 stations where we begin uh, building the, um, putting the wood up and it goes all the way through until to install appliances as well and uh, we ship them in boxes this house happened to be uh, 12 different boxes that we ship from uh, Pennsylvania down here with me now are three of the volunteers who have been spending their time this week volunteering for the project so how has it been working um, all week on the project uh, it's actually been a lot of fun it's kind of uh, it's a new experience I think for all of us just being involved with the TV show and the uh, you know, just the volunteer aspect of it and hopefully helping out these young girls that are getting the house. And what's your tasks been? Uh, well, we're all electricians, so we've been taking care of the electrical service and the, you know, the lighting and receptacles all through the house. And how did you guys find out about this? Found out about it through our company, Gil Simpson Electric, and uh, sent us down here to help out on Wednesday and help with everything needed to be done electrically. So do you think that me and Sabrina look like we could go on set and work right now with sure these outfits on? Sure. <laughs> no problem. We look protected? Sure you are. We'll, we'll work that out. <laughs> <laughs> I think all work might stop at that point. <laughs> Click on this here with Marsha Meehan, who is the executive director of Boys Hope, Girls Hope. So Marsha, can I ask you to tell me a little bit about your organization? Certainly. Boys Hope, Girls Hope has been in, in existence since 2001 in Baltimore. It's um, an organization that reaches out to boys and girls and gives them the opportunity to live in a home and be surrounded by all the tools they need to succeed. We have staff that work with them to support them, empower them, nurture them for success. We give them the opportunity to go to high school and then also graduate and we support them all the way through college. They, we develop men and women for others who um, give 100 hours of community service back to the community work it, it is quite a lot because a lot of them have opportunities in their schools to do those hours but they go even beyond that as you see with this whole project the neighborhood is just embracing this project because we have embraced them as well we work hand in hand with our neighbors and reaching out and we support each other and it really is a truly wonderful home in a sense that it is based on wonderful values. Hi, I'm Krista Molana, your host for Click On This. Today we're on the set of Extreme Makeover Home Edition and with me now I have Kermit the Frog and his beautiful wife Anne. So tell us how you guys got to be on set today. Well, we live in the neighborhood. We live one block away from where the house is being built and we've been living here since 1947 and the street is home to us and we're Real excited about what's going on here. It's been a great, great thing for us in this neighborhood. And can you tell us some of the excitement and stuff that you've seen all week long? Well, I've seen the, the big, the big campers, the big buses, and all the traffic and uh, the way they got the uh, material moved in and out. The organization has been great, and it's been, been real exciting for us to see what's going on. But there are conditions that they have to follow in order to stay in the program. So what are some of the conditions that the boys and the girls have to follow? We encourage them to keep their grade point above a 3.0. Um, and we surround them with tutors and staff that work with them on that. They must complete 100 hours of community service, um, which they find, you know, okay, we got to go do this. And they've done some very interesting ones, but they find they get so much out of it. Plus, it opens doors into other opportunities for them, which is phenomenal. Um, they must do their chores. Um, and we have an interesting program where they have to do so much and then they move forward in that. So when our collegians, which we support also, come back home, they have to pay a certain percentage of their car insurance the first year. Then it starts diminishing so that they actually are ready to graduate and are understanding how much it does cost and that it's not a surprise at the end, you know, so that they're ready to step out in the community, not just to succeed, 
but to reach out and be men and women for others. Oh, that's wonderful. And I actually hear that the CEO of the international program is here painting. Yes, he's come to join us. <laughs> Hello, how are you, Paul? Very well, very well. Um, so why don't you tell me how you got involved in this organization? I hear you were a house parent. I was. I actually started out as a tutor uh, in the Boys Hope Home in Evanston, Illinois, when I was a sophomore in college back in, I'm dating myself, 1985. Uh, and then I was a house parent for a year, uh, and then uh, after I graduated, before I went off to law school, a gentleman called me named Father Paul Sheridan. He said, I'm the head of the international organization. I said, I didn't know there was an international organization. He said, oh yeah, and I want you to co-direct the summer camp that we run up in Canada before you go to law school. And I said, sure. And, uh, and that 10 weeks changed my life forever because Boys Hope Girls Hope and the young men and women that I came in contact with in Chicago and since then have just never left my heart and have become a huge part of my life ever since. And, and so when I got the call in 1997 to leave my law firm job and come and work for Boys Hope Girls Hope full time, it was the easiest decision I ever had to make. So what was the process to make this, make all of these companies come together and to get this built? Well, it was uh, a, a series of, of very long meetings uh, process started about two and a half months ago. A couple meetings in the office. Uh, we designed the house the first day and went through some of the, the plan elements in the house. And we just started gathering suppliers and vendors and subcontractors that wanted to do work on the house. And what are some of the companies that Maryland Community Builders Foundation work with that you were able to kind of pull in for this project? Well, I'd say most importantly was, was uh, Architectural by Design, Judy Miller. Uh, Excel Homes, who provided some of the, bo the boxes for the house. It's a module, modular component. Uh, Brothers Roofing, Charles Klein, Belfast Valley contractors did the, the cement. Uh, Melco Painting has been fantastic. He's been here for the last three days painting and drywall. Uh, There's just so many. I mean, everybody that came out here, I, I can't name them all. There's, okay. honestly. And I hear that you guys are now celebrating your wedding anniversary. How many years? 66 years yesterday. Congratulations. And since you guys have been in the neighborhood for so long, can you tell our viewers like some of the history of this neighborhood? Well, this street used to be blocked off, right, about where we're standing. And we used to sleigh ride on with our kids when they were growing up because it was a blocked off street. Okay. When it, the country street and it had big trees on both sides. And in 1962, they decided to cut Water Boulevard through, and they cut Fleetwood Avenue through. So now we have one-way traffic. We have a bus from a little country street to a big traffic. So you've guys seen in the last, gosh, many, many years, this neighborhood change in many ways. And now you're seeing it, like, change people's lives. How is that? It's great. It's great to see this. It's a big asset to the community. And I think it'll, it'll mean a lot to uh, everybody in the community to have the girls here and we have the boys just a half a block away. So I think it's great to have it here. I agree. Well, thank you guys so much for your, letting me interview you today. All right. Thank, thank you. you very much. It's been our pleasure. And happy anniversary. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> thank you very much. I'm Crystal Milana, and you are watching Click On This. You're watching, You're watching Click On This. this.